Alright guys, so, haven't made an update video on the home theater in a while, or any video on it for that matter, and I thought I'd make a little update video to show everything that's happened, because a lot has happened. I'm pointing the camera because I don't want to spoil anything yet. But, the first thing is I built a projector screen, and here it is. And this is basically a 100 inch a diagonal projector screen and I used a, a spandex material actually it's like <clears throat> yeah it's a spandex it's a white spandex and then I also used a black a black felt behind it I, f I forget what material it's made of but yeah I built a wooden frame across and around or I built a wooden frame, not the black frame, but there's another wooden frame behind that that the span the felts are attached to, and I stretched the f the f the fabrics over top of that. I don't know. You might be able to see back there. That's where it is. But um, yeah. Um, and then I did. I used some. I guess these are what are these? They're like half inch thick. Uh, two and a half inches wide. Uh, I think they're pine wood. The wood back here was really crappy wood. I didn't want to get anything too expensive, but and then I spray painted this black so that it. And I, I actually need to fix this because I don't know if you can see on camera, but it kind of goes up a little bit, and then this one goes in. And I also need to center this a bit better. But overall, the screen turned out really, you know. It actually turned out quite nice. Um, I'm very impressed. Uh, what else do we have? Next thing. I mean, that's... I guess this can segue into... The next thing, which is the projector. Now, I'm going to start off by... This, there's actually kind of a story behind this. So, I originally bought this projector right here. And this is a Panasonic PT-LB51U. Um... XGA projector, the resolution of 1024 by 768. It's like 2,000 lumens. But, and I bought it for like 50 bucks on eBay, you know. And it only had, uh, as you can see, 25 hours on the bulb, which I confirmed was true. But I plugged it in, and I noticed... Oh, I was pointing the camera up, sorry. I plugged it in, and I noticed that the picture was very dim for a 2,000 lumen projector. So I decided to investigate more what happened. Um, I... I opened the thing up. It's open right now, but... And I noticed that... This is a 3 LCD projector, by the way. But I noticed that somewhere over here, there was a piece of glass that was actually broken. And... You know, it wouldn't have been a big deal. I, you know, I, I, I took the glass out. I, it was just a piece of glass. I don't know if it was a filter or anything, but... Maybe it was, but... Um, whatever it was, I took it out, but as I was trying to put the thing back together, I had this panel off, I had the panel covering all the, the lenses and stuff, I accidentally jumped this and all the lenses and filters flew out of it, so I had to, f so I had to figure out where to put each one, and it was, you know, it was a bit of a pain to be honest. Um, and I don't even, and I, I couldn't figure out where they were supposed to go, because I kept turning the projector on, and it just didn't look right. It was, like, red in the middle, or the colors were totally wrong, you know. Um, so I have no idea. Maybe that piece of glass was, um, part of this. So I contacted the eBay seller about the problem. I sent him a picture, and he was like, oh, no problem, I'll give you a full refund, and you don't have to send it back. So I was like... I got my 50 bucks back. I got to keep this thing. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Maybe I can try to find a broken, like a, a for parts unit on eBay for like 10 bucks or something, like super cheap. So I can fix this one up and maybe donate it or something. But yeah, that's, that's that story. Then after that, I was super pissed. So I, I ordered a, um, well, I wasn't pissed about that they got gave me a refund, but I was super pissed, so I decided to order this this projector on eBay. It was a Mitsubishi model. I forget what it was. And I ordered it, but 
the next day, in the morning, I got, my dad was in London at the time, I got a message from him, actually, wait a minute, yeah, I got a message that he had a projector for me, I don't know where, how he, you know, how he got it or anything, but he just had, he said he had a projector for me, so, I went ahead, he said, hey, I'll send you a picture of it, and I was like, holy crap, this is actually amazing, and I was like, well, I just ordered this other projector, now I can't cancel the order because it had already shipped, which, you know, overnight shipping, I guess. So I waited, so I got this projector, which is the one that I got from my dad. It's an NEC, oh, what the heck is it? Uh, P451W, that's what it is. Uh, it doesn't say on it, but I just remembered that. And this thing is amazing. It's 4,500 lumens, which is bonkers. Uh, it's WXGA, which means it's 1280 by 800. It has HDMI on it, as you can see. There's a Chromecast that's just sitting there that I was experimenting with. Um, yeah. So I got this. I have it wall mount, uh, ceiling mounted, I mean, with this mount I got for like $20 on Amazon. It's actually a really nice mount for the price. It's very well built. Um, and yeah, so then I got the other projector, and it came. But it wasn't the projector that I ordered. Which was kind of funny in a way, because it was just like, I didn't even need it in the first place, but I got the wrong projector. But the thing is, I didn't actually get the wrong projector. It was a mislabel of the eBay uh, listing, because the number of hours that were listed on eBay was the same number of hours that were on the projector that was sent to me. So someone got the model number wrong on the listing. So I sent that one back. I'm waiting for my refund. I still haven't gotten it. It's been like freaking three weeks since I sent it back. It's... I don't know what the hell is wrong with this seller, but whatever. Won't mention any names, but hopefully that gets sorted out. But yeah, that's the projector situation. So that's... Yeah, so now I have this thing, and it's great. It's a very great projector. It's a business class, you know, projector. It's not a home theater one, but it's a very bright image. Uh, very good color rep uh, reproduction. Next thing that I've done is running cables through the walls, actually. So as you can see here, I have some wall plates one of which is an HDMI wall plate right there. The HDMI cable in it. This one's blue. Looks kind of cool. And then speaker. Uh, focus. There you go. Oh, come on. There you go. So this, and then I had I put in a um a speaker terminal wall plate. One is for the center channel, which is as you guys know behind the screen. One is for the rear left, and one is for the rear right. So what happens? I'm going to take a little journey behind that wall so you can see exactly what happens in here. Because what happens is right there, <clears throat> out comes your HDMI and your... I actually used Cat5 for the rear left and right because it was I already had it and since it's good. And then this is actually a very nice HDMI cable. It's 25 feet for like 10 bucks. It was a really great deal. But um, they run up into the ceiling. I fished it using a fish tape. And then we, we added some string going from one place to another so that if we decided to feed any more cables, it would be super easy. We just use a string. Yeah, they go, that, they go up into the ceiling right there. And then, if I can get out of here. They go <clears throat> up into the ceiling. I uh, use this access panel to my advantage. Um, there's actually a junction box right there, which is why this had to be put there, because according to code or something, th there needed to be an access panel for that. But it goes up there. I, I There's a piece of string running from there to there, and from there down there. So... We fed it to here, then we fed it down there, because it was the easiest way to do it, because there's too much crap blocking going this way, since the joists run this way. 
and there's like pipes going that way and stuff like those ones um so yeah ran in the ceiling and they come out here onto the ceiling this was the only place because there's the stud finder was showing that there was some just wood all across that area over there, so I didn't want to risk, um, you know, cutting with the drywall saw and realizing that I couldn't actually do anything with that. But yeah, they come out here, rear left and right, they go around to the rear channels, which I still have to paint the mounts for, but, and then your HDMI comes out here, have it nailed up, goes up here, and it's the projector. And I have plans to, I have an outlet actually, and I'm getting, I'm going to have an outlet installed, and it's going to tap off of that junction box right there, that's underneath that access panel, so that I don't have to have extension cord running down to the outlet, or, you know, like this. So yeah, that's that situation. The next thing I got, which I was using for a while, was this TOA amp, and it really isn't designed what I was using it with, but here it is. It's a it's a TOA uh, A724. It's a 240 watt 70 volt amplifier that I got from a friend because I traded my old projector for this thing, and I was using it to run the subwoofers here um, <clears throat> on the four ohm tap. But it just it re it just wasn't powerful enough. It kept the you know it kept clipping. Kept I kept you know I. God, I kept pushing it to clipping, basically. So I switched back to the crown amp there. Um, just today, actually. But yeah. So that's that That was that situation. I also moved the subs there because I was getting annoyed. Even though, you know, they're a lot louder sitting where that, where that speaker is. They sound much more centered right there. And less off to the side. So that's why they're there, but yeah, this this is a mess. Hopefully, once I get like a console or something, I can clean that up. Um, next thing I got was this HDMI uh, switch here, and I I'm using it for this since this uh <laughs> what am I saying? I'm using it for my HDMI devices. I have an HDMI adapter on that Wii there. Because this, the Yamaha receiver does not have HDMI on it, it only has composite and component. Because it's, it's from a time when HDMI wasn't uh, common on receivers. So, that's why I bought this. And it has an IR remote and an, uh, an IR uh, receiver right here. But, I ran into a little bit of a problem. See, when... I use a remote to turn the volume down. I'll get to the remote I have in a second. When I use a remote to turn the volume down of this receiver, it also switches the input on that. I hate when it's just like there's a cro They both use the same frequency for that. And so I just can't use the IR function of this thing. The auto, the auto switch function works perfectly. You just... The instant you turn on a new device, it'll automatically switch to that. Um, and if everything's off the device you turn on, it'll switch to that automatically. It's It works very well. Um, for the price I paid, which was like $10. Now, um, yeah, so getting to the remote. This is pretty cool, actually. I bought this. It's a Sony RM VL600 remote. And what this is is it's a learning remote. So that means that you can take any remote, select any of your um, devices, device keys up here, set it, and you can program any of these keys except for these bottom. I'll explain these bottom keys in a second. You can give it a code to a button and a s to, you can give it a code from another remote and assign it to any of these keys that you want. Which is extremely useful because now I can have this to control the receiver. I was controlling that before I had the issue and the projector. So that's what, you know, that it's pretty cool. Now the, the nice thing about this remote actually is the bottom six system control buttons. Oops, I didn't mean to zoom in there, which you can actually 
set to do a, they're like macro keys. You can set them to do several buttons, to press several buttons, uh, not at once, but in order. So what I so you what I do is I have this but the A button to turn it turns on the receiver and the um, projector at the same time, like this. There goes that, and there goes the projector. Oi, turn that down. But um, yeah, so that's super handy to have with this remote. Um. Yeah, I'll show you the problem in a second once the projector warms up. Uh, but yeah, that's that was the deal with that. I mean, no, nah, that that kind of sucked really that it did that. But and until I get a different switcher or a new receiver with HDMI on it, uh, or a, just a new receiver in general that ha that uses different codes, I'm gonna be stuck with that problem. All right, next thing I did is I switched my computer from analog to using SBDIF. And I have this one, this is really, really like ghetto rigs here. Inside, you can't even see, but inside my case, there's a, on my motherboard, there's a, um, there's a header on the motherboard for SBDIF out. But I didn't have a connector uh, for it. I didn't have the H SBDIF adapter. So what I had to do, uh, where the heck is it? I had to get, one of my fans from in this this drawer here. I have several PC fans in here, and I cut the I had to cut the connector off of one of them, and you, you modify it slightly so it would fit in there. And then I have it coming out of one of the PCI slots, ghetto duct taped to a random RCA cable going into the coaxial. But I'm not complaining. It literally works perfectly. Um, yeah. Let me wake the PC up here. There we go. There's your projector. As you can see, the image is very, very bright. This is in a fully lit room, which is, you know, great. And that's that's in eco mode, too. That's in low lamp mode. Because uh, I want to save as many hours on this projector as I can. It's has a hundred one thousand one hundred hours on it so far, and it says it has seventy percent of its bulb life left, which is nice. Who the heck is that? There's a guy up there. Sorry for the jump cut there. I was just uh, there's some guy. It was a lawn care guy who was just doing stuff. Anyways, um, few more things. Uh, my Boston A70s here. Uh, they have new woofers in them. I bought. I got some for fifty dollars on eBay, used. Um, one of them had a, a dented dust cap, so I removed it and tried to fix it. Um, the reason I did that is because of this. <gasps> yeah, one of the woofers is uh. One of the old woofers has a fold in the cone. Let me focus that right there. And it causes it to make that noise while it's playing. This woofer is fine. These are the ones that I refoamed. Um, I hadn't catch I, I didn't catch that um, mess up when I was refoaming them. I did a pretty crappy job, but that's alright. Um so yeah, that woofer's messed up, unfortunately. This one's still fine, though. I'll just keep it as a backup in case something happens to either of these. And these actually have uh, the stock foam on them from when they were first made. It has the same feel as the woofers do in the A100s over there. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so now, I guess I'll demonstrate that. And the problem it has with the remote. So let me demonstrate the, the little issue. I'm going to turn the Wii on. As you can see, it auto switched to the Wii. There you go. It's, it auto switches to the Wii. But I'm going to switch it back to the PC and plug in the IR receiver. And show you exactly what the problem is. Plugged it in. When I press volume down, try to get both in the shot. 
it switches the input and lowers the volume of the receiver. So look, I push volume down and it switches the input. So, nah, there's nothing really I can do about that, unfortunately. It's not a big deal, really, but, you know, it's just a small annoyance that I, you know, that I can't use the remote function for that. But, I mean, I, I mean, that's really it for this. Um, some things I need to do, uh, fix the frame, get it centered, uh, get acoustic treatment, you know, all, what I ha I actually... And some of the things I've bought so far that I have on the way, let me just pull it up here. Because I have, I have a list. Or I have my eBay stuff that I've bought. Uh, purchase history. Right, so... I bought some LEDs. Uh, HDMI to component for the receiver so that I can see the uh, on sc on screen... The GUI, basically. The OSD or whatever. Or whatever you call it. Um, through the projector. Because uh, I was using that TV there. Um, I also bought a uh, an RF LED controller for those LED strips. Because the regular LED controllers, they mess with the projector. They mess with the receiver. They, me they mess with everything, basically. Which kind of sucks, but it's alright. I guess. Um, whoops, what happened? Anyways. Yeah, so I bought that. The other thing I bought is an SB, uh, uh, optical cable and an HDMI to SB diff adapter so that I can get the audio out of the HDMI and put it into the receiver. And hopefully once I do that, I won't need the uh, junky SB diff connection. For the uh, computer, because the... Yeah. So that's basically it, really, for all that stuff. Um, yeah, other than that, I think that's really it for the update. So stay tuned for more videos on this thing once I get new stuff. And once it's changed enough to make a, you know, a, a good lengthy video like this one on it. So yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah, hope you're enjoying this series so far. I'm having so much fun building this home theater. It's it's ridiculous. Like something I've wanted to do for forever, and finally making this reality, which is nice. Oh yeah, the other thing is I plan to get get new subwoofers. Uh, probably two 12-inch subwoofers are gonna go on either side, there and there, like where those subs used to be. But yeah. Because these are kind of junky, really. But, um... Oh, jeez, my voice. Sorry. But, um... Yeah. I mean, that's that's really it. Thanks for watching.